Good morning, adventurers. I just woke up in Cody, Wyoming, and we are about to enter Yellowstone, where we are going to spend the next few days exploring all of the amazing, amazing things that there are in the park. I just had to stop off at this overlook, though. Wow! These are the kind of views that we have been looking for on this trip. I'm just gonna take it in. It's so gorgeous. And a little tidbit. See right up on this ridge? That's where they do the nightly rodeo here in Cody, Wyoming from June, July, and August. views and this is just a road pull off like here's the road here's the river so pretty off at this campsite because they have some grizzly bear information. Since we are in grizzly bear country, I figure we should be educated. It says here that to identify a grizzly bear, we're going to look for this little hump. That means it's a grizzly bear. Now, a regular bear is going to have no hump. Both of these kind of bears can be found here. Now, look at this. This is what's scary. Normal bear claw, grizzly bear claw. Yeah, we're in bear country, guys. Something else that we should know is while in bear country, there are a few things that we need to do to make sure that we don't attract the bears. Now, this right here talks all about our food storage. It's not as simple as just, hey, put it in your car. Nope, there are a few rules. For example, hanging your food. It needs to be at least 10 feet high. Now, bears can climb up trees, so it's not like they can't, but the idea is, you would rather it be away from you rather than in the middle of your camp. They also have bear boxes or hard-sided vehicles. A bear can get into your vehicle though, so keep that in mind. If there's a bear box, consider using it. Now, you might ask yourself, why risk camping where there are bears? Well, because the view, it's gorgeous. There are so many amazing views at this campground, including this one right here. <sighs> If I wasn't going a little bit further along, I would totally stop off just to stay at this campsite because it's pretty. There is so much beauty to take in along this drive and I suggest if you have the time just to take your time. The speed limit through here is 50 and there's plenty of turnoffs. So if somebody's pushing you along rather than going around you, just pull over to the side, allow them to go around and keep enjoying at your speed because that's what it's really about is taking in these moments. It really is spectacular what you can find when you're looking. Atop one of the mountains, I found this. This is a Wayfarer's Chapel where during the summer months, they actually do a Sunday service. It's outdoors. It's beautiful, and look at these views. It's really interesting. I didn't know what to expect whenever I saw the sign, so I went ahead and drove up, found this little trailhead, which is probably 100 yards, and then there it was, right there. It's pretty cool. Life really is about those moments that you're willing to stop and take in. It doesn't have to be something huge to be something super enjoyable. That little tiny hike right there gave me a good excuse to get out of the car and see a beautiful view whenever I came back down. This view is crazy good, and I would have never seen it had I not been a little curious. Look at all of the bugs on the poor Roadrunner. Those mostly came from Nebraska, and there were quite a few also in Montana. 
Oh. Tea of the drive. Yep, we need to wash the Roadrunner. Hey guys, we made it to Yellowstone and we haven't even made it in the park yet. There are so many beautiful things along the drive that I just took my time and we're gonna spend a few days here. So let's get ready, buckle up. There's gonna be several days of Yellowstone's amazing, amazing things. these whenever we came in the gate so I think that we should look them over and figure out what we're going to do and we'll start with this that says think safety act safely oh it's a dangerous place good times we have this which is a more detailed map that gives us information the best points of interest that most people are interested in and on this other side is the super detailed map if I can open it, there it is. So that's the super detailed. It is so peaceful out here and the water is actually quite clear. So it's really a great way to come into the east entrance and have a first real focal point. <sighs> I could get used to this, guys. I could get used to this. here at Cub Creek. Trees just look like they're sticking up like little sticks and you can definitely tell by the ones that still have branches how they were affected by the fire because they look all droopy and wilty. It's kind of sad but at the same time this is how nature replenishes itself. like off in the distance there's actually something else on fire and I can't imagine that being a prescribed fire when it's so windy out. It is ridiculously windy so we're definitely going to keep an eye on that make sure it doesn't shift and come our way because it could go fast around here. Everything at this point because it's so dry would probably just By the time that we reached this shore, I really didn't know what to expect. I had no idea that the lake was this large. It was absolutely amazing and breathtaking. You could see the lake from a variety of viewpoints on the eastern side and I just took in everything.
one of the geyser basins. So we are walking on the boardwalk, the safe area, and we're about to go check these out. bubbles that you see are actually from the thermal area so those are extremely hot and we will go nowhere near them now I recently was checking out the news and noticed that there was a man who mistook hot springs for these totally different and uh, these will scald you so you want to stay out of them that's why they have these boardwalks here for us because it's safe here like the sign says thin crust not people called the bluebell pool and it's bright blue and I can only imagine when the sun is in a different position that it glistens like crazy. Now there is a tour going on up here so I wanted to go ahead and get a little bit of ahead of it because otherwise I was gonna be behind like 30 people. This basin is one you won't want to miss. It goes directly beside the lake itself, and there are many vantage points where you can see that the geothermal features flow directly into the water, yet the fish and the wildlife are just fine. This is a great place to really come out and observe and get a closer look when you don't want a big crowd. changes from this water that's super blue and clear to this darker blue of the lake and it's really interesting as you see the minerals running from up here into the Basin was definitely worth it. A lot of beautiful things and some of the geysers haven't been active in a while but they're still pretty to look at and they still have that geothermal water that's in there so it's still bubbling even if they're not erupting. Made a little stop in the bookstore on my way out and asked about a few destinations that I'm very interested in for the next few days and got some great tips. Look at this, it is so beautiful. <sighs> Let's get a closer look. We are so fortunate to have these amazing, beautiful things right here in our own backyard. We just have to get out and explore more. Bit of a situation. 
was planning on staying in Yellowstone because it was Monday, I was thinking, oh, people will go home. Wrong. So I had a backup plan, which was this campsite that I'm actually driving through right now. This is all free camping and it's absolutely amazing out here, but there are five campsites that I have passed so far. And by campsites, I mean one to five different campsites. All of them are packed. And so I have an interesting predicament now. I have to find out where I'm going to stay. Side note, the few campgrounds that do have availability are campgrounds I can't stay at because they don't allow tent campers. <laughs> oh, the irony. just got to see some beautiful deer. I am very disappointed that not only did we not find a campsite and beat ourselves up on that road, but we also don't have cell service so we can't just go and look for another campsite. So I'm gonna have to find either cell service or just kind of wing it. The good news is I put tons of gas in my car in Cody so even if we have to drive for a little bit we're gonna be okay. like that my day gets better. I was completely lost and confused and I stopped for a second to talk to somebody who actually works here. His name was Hardy. He was awesome. Not only did he give me some great advice as to where I could possibly camp, but he also told me where I could find sales signals. So I feel so much more accomplished now. Back on the road we go. this wonderful campsite where you can see the Tetons in the distance. I watched the sunset, I made a wonderful meal, and bedded down for the night. I'm going to leave the GPS coordinates below, but I hope you've enjoyed today's episode.